we live? Good, 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 Abel. All right, morning, good morning, church. Welcome. Um, yeah, so beautiful day. It's slightly rainy, but that's okay. Um, let's start praying with the Lent Collect, I believe, that we have in the next slide. So let's say it together. Oh, let's, sorry, let's stand before we say this. So let's say it together. Almighty and everlasting.
indeed we sing a hallelujah crowd to our God. So let's say together, church, our offering sentence from Malachi. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven, and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10. Now is our time of offering and tithes when we give back to God what he has blessed us with. Last week a child asked me, why do we bring money and things to the church every week? And it was such a good question, right? Because we see in the picture, the picture of the grapes, the fruitfulness, God's people always just responded to God's generosity. So if you would like to respond, you can give online or you can give as the offering bag comes around or you can drop off a check at another time. Let's just offer to God our hearts, our spirits, our everything. Let's sing together our offering. of your own do we give you. Amen. Now we want to welcome one another as we share God's peace. And today I especially wanted to welcome, we have a new, uh, a new child with us. She is five years old and her name is Giselle. Giselle, could you just wave to us? Oh, there at the back with our Auntie Anna. Hi, we welcome you, Giselle. She came with her grandparents. We welcome Giselle. All right, we're going to share God's peace because Jesus said, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I don't give to you as the world gives. So let's go around if you'd like to say hi, peace be with you. Uh, let's greet one another. Hi, peace, everyone. Thank you. Peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace, peace. Alan. Peace, everyone. And peace, Doreen. Peace, everyone. Peace, Pat. Peace. Peace. Peace, Pat. peace. peace Alan. <laughs> Abel, hey, see us. Emma, Haman, Abigail, Godwin, this is the Lord. All right, you guys can sit down. A few announcements for you. AGM is next Sunday. Um, we're sharing the bulletin in chat, I hope, I believe. If you want to check out the bulletin, it's also online on our website. Uh, you go to sermons and then you click on this week's sermon and you press like read more or something like that, I think. And you should be able to load up the bulletin. Um, if you weren't on the members list, for the SGM, um, hopefully we figured it out in between, but you should still just double check the members list to make sure. To be a member, you need to be, have gone through like the newcomers class or confirmation class, that kind of thing, and um, have to have attended our church somewhat regularly this past year. Like if you just came back from wherever you were, then you're probably not a member until you spent um, the year with us. Um, Oh, and we need to register for AGM. So it'll be both in person and on Zoom. Uh, you can register through your small group leaders or call Christine, our church secretary. 
uh, to confirm your attendance in person or online. Um, and then we just want to make sure when you're on Zoom, if you're going to join on Zoom, try to do so each person having a separate device with your full name as it would show up on the voters list so that we can admit you quickly. We will do it faster this time. Uh, yeah, and then you need your own device. So those are the rules sort of around this. It'll just help us get through the voting process more smoothly than last time. Um, yep, next. PPP is today at 2 p.m. So for you kids, there will be, I see some egg cartons. There's some interesting things going on. We'll find out more this afternoon after you have lunch. So come and hang out for that. And we're going camping. Uh, so we've already made an initial booking. It's, it's at a campground in Hope. These are pictures that Carrie, Carrie said that they went there last year, so I just used her pictures um, to show you a little bit more of what it's like. It looks really beautiful. Hopefully it's just as sunny when we go as it was when they went, because it looks amazing. Um, and um, yeah, so if you want to go, please, uh, we can have the computer set up with the Google form later on after service. You can also uh, check out the Google form online later at if you figure if you need to figure out your schedules and stuff like that but it's july 15th to the 17th we'd love to have you join us we have i think already over 20 people um who registered to go and uh, we would love to have more of you join us and of course let's keep on praying for nasir gill and his family uh he went for another health checkup everything is looking really good no major issues coming up so we just continue to pray for them if you don't know he did have a major major health scare last year um was very sort of frightening uh, and worrisome but god has brought him through that and in the subsequent months every time he's been to the doctor it's been clean bill uh so far he's he is on a lot of meds to sort of help him deal with those things but like it's it's come back clean every single time so we're thankful for that. So let's pray right now. So God, we just thank you that we can gather together today. So many of us here in person as well as on Zoom. And God, we want to lift up to you, Nasser. And Lord, we just praise you that, that in spite of his health scare, you were able to deliver him from what seemed like the brink of death and that he's able to be healthy now. And God, we continue to intercede on behalf of their family that you might lead them into the process of this sponsorship. Lord, we've begun the process, but we're in this weird waiting time where we don't know. It's kind of like waiting for you, Jesus. We hope and we look forward to that day and we believe that you will come and we believe that they will come, but we don't know when and we don't know how. And there's still is a lot of paperwork potentially to be done and interviews and so on but lord we just trust you in this process and ask that you would be in charge so lord would you lead us and guide us we pray amen if you'd like to receive prayer ministry uh, we'd love to pray for you after service let's stand together now and say the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's remain standing for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. 
There were some present at that very time who told about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think, think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in, in his vineyard. He came seeking fruit on it and found none. He said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have been seeking fruit from this on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? He answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put manure put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well good, but if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are kind. You are kind while you call your children to return to you. You give us a chance to bear fruit, to turn our lives back to you. So thank you, Father, for your kindness that you call us back to you. Lead us today, Lord, to see how much you lead us, how much you want to pour your spirit on us, how much you want to empower us as your children, all sons and daughters together. We thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated, everybody. Well, good morning, church. So for the last few weeks since Lent, we have been doing this series on the book of Joel in the Old Testament, a book that calls us to be people of repentance. And the theme today is that we are all sons and daughters. You are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. That is what God says to us. And he has a great promise for the children. Can we go to the next slide? I thought if you can, I don't know if you can see it, but well, actually you probably can't see it. So I won't ask you to read it together. It's a bit hard to see. What do you see on the top? A fire, right? A flame, right, children? This is when God's spirit comes. He gives us fire, a warmth. He gives us his presence. Because God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That means all people. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Today, God is telling us that all the children in the room can see God and hear God. All the young men, all the young women, you can see God. All the old men, all the old women, you can see God and hear his words. You know, when the Spirit of God comes, he actually may say something to us. So I invite you, let's go to the, the next slide, is for the children, I want to ask you, I don't know if you talked about this in Kids Connect yet, but just imagine when the Spirit of God is filling your life, what does it look like? What does God say to you? Maybe think about when Jesus, when he was baptized, the Spirit of God came on him. What did he see? Does anybody remember? He saw the clouds open, right? He saw the dove, the spirit. So I want you to imagine, and for all the adults, teens too, we can imagine when the spirit of God comes on my life, what does it look like? And what does he say to us? And as we look into God's word today, you can keep this question in your head. When the spirit of God comes, what does it look like? All right, so children, be free to draw and receive what God gives you. I want to recap Joel for you now. So the next picture, I showed it a few weeks ago. Remember that in the beginning of Joel, why he writes this book is there was a huge plague going on, which was the locust swarm. The locust swarm was eating up all the crops. 
And so people had no food to grow because you need the crops in order to harvest the wheat, to make the flour, to make the bread. So there was no food available. There was a famine. Have you ever not had food for a while? How does it feel, Joseph? It's not good right, when you don't have food. I'm, when I get hungry, I get angry. I'm like, oh, I want food, right? Well, how does it feel when we have no food, right? Or how does it feel when your bank account looks pretty empty? You're like, man, I, I really need to pay the bills this month. <laughs> I just bought this big purchase and I can't pay for it. This is what the people of Israel felt like. Just like around the world now, remember we said a few weeks ago, we look all around the world with the wars going on. People don't have enough. This is the situation in the Bible. And yet God gives a very interesting promise of three things that we read in Joel 2. Next slide. And these three things that he mentioned in the passage is grain, new wine, and oil. Grain, new wine, and oil. And I'm going to read to you from Joel chapter 2, verse uh, 19. If you have your Bible, you can open it up to Joel chapter 2, uh, verse 19. Uh, it will also be on the screen. So let me just read to you from verse 19. And the context of this is that Israel has been attacked by the northern enemies, and they have no food. Okay, so this is what God is promising after Israel. Last week we said, rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord. Repent. Remember? So after we repent, this is what God is speaking to the people. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you grain, new wine, and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. Verse 21. Do not be afraid, land of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid, you wild animals. For the pastures and the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Rejoice, people. Although you have lost your crops, you have lost your food, you have lost your money, you have lost your health, but still I send you the rain showers and the autumn rains and the spring rains as before. He, God says that even in the wilderness when there's nothing growing, I'm bringing back green pastures. Even for the animals. The animals, the scriptures say, God cares for his creation. God is saying, even when your life feels like it's parched, there's nothing in there that to celebrate, God can still be faithful to send you the rain. Even when our cars break down, right, Mark? Even when our bank accounts are empty, we trust God is going to send us his provision. So I, I brought these three little props today. So... Can you see? This is the first thing I brought. What is this? <laughs> Zoe, what is this? I use this, right, to make pizza. <laughs> I use it to make my ciabatta. This is flour. So this is the f one of the things God says he's going to send the people, right? The grain. The grain. You know how grain is produced, right? It's got to be harvested from wheat. And so think about grain, about bread. God is saying, I will give you food to eat. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. What Jesus is saying is, I will give you your every need. Remember, Jesus taught us to pray, give us today our daily, what? Bread, right? This is one of the promises of God, the grain of God. And then God says, I'm going to give you new wine. I'm going to give you wine, right? Because when Jesus came, it was always a party. Wine signaled that there was a fruitfulness. Do you remember Jesus' first miracle? He turned water into wine. Yeah, that's right. You guys know it. And so it signaled that Jesus, when he comes and the kingdom of God is coming, God is the husband who is marrying his church. And there's going to be wine at the wedding. Hallelujah. There's going to be wine at the wedding to celebrate God's goodness and abundance. And then the third thing, you know what this is, right? Oil. Olive oil, right? I'm just showing you everything from my pantry. Right? This is what I use all the time. Uh, 
olive oil because oil is a symbol in the Bible of God's presence. When God anointed the kings and the prophets, he would pour his oil on them. Do you remember King David when he was still a shepherd boy? The prophet Samuel poured the oil on his head to anoint him as king because the oil is a symbol of God's presence. And it's why when we pray for people, we often anoint them with oil. It's a sign of God's goodness. And so we have grain, we have new wine, we have oil. And as I thought about this, you know, it really made me be thankful because last week, one of the children asked me, uh, Denise, you had such a good question of, Pastor Aggie, why do we bring money to the church to God? Why, right? Well, because in the Old Testament, people would grow their grain. They would grow their olives. They would grow their grapes. And they knew that God controlled the rains and the weather to give them a harvest. So when they received the harvest, they would bring it back to God. Isn't it interesting that when God says he's going to give you grain and new wine, did you read the Old Testament, the offerings? There are grain offerings of the finest flour. There are bread offerings with the finest oil. And there is also offering. Well, I don't know if there's an offering with wine, but wine is part of the offering life. And so what we receive, we also give. We receive blessing that we may bless others, that we may give back to God. This is why we offer. And so this is a promise of God, that children of God, my spirit comes upon you, I will make you fruitful again. Let's think just for a little bit deeper. How are these uh, products processed? How are they produced? You know how flour come, they don't just come in bags, right? <laughs> flour, you have to gather the wheat. And then you have to beat the wheat uh, from the, sh separate the wheat from the chaff. So all the, the grains come out. And then after that, you have to mill it to crush it to get the flour. Do you feel sometimes you're in a season of being beaten down, being crushed through your struggles, to be milled into the finest flour to become bread that will bring life? God may be doing that in our lives. Or what about wine? Children, do you know what? fruit wine comes from? Anybody? Tabby? Grapes, right? And the grapes, they have to be crushed, right? Traditionally, they would step on the, the, the grapes, right, in the wine barrels. And after you crush all the wine juice, do you drink it right away? No, it's grape juice, right? You have to wait and let it ferment. That means it takes a lot of time for it to develop flavor. Very often, in our world, we want everything to be done right away. We're an instant culture, right? Everything on your app right away. But did you know some of the best things take time to ferment? You know, some people say you age like fine wine, right? That means that, oh, you look pretty good in your old age, right? But I believe Jesus has the same uh, promise for us that he wants us to be patient, to be fermented. So especially, you know, for the high school students, I know we need to get things done. We want it right away. But, you know, Matthew, you're going to age like fine wine. You want to take your time to be fermented, right? To be fermented with God's fragrance so you'll be fine wine. All of us, we want this, right, Ernest? You're going to make some wine, be fermented. So God is saying in this process of becoming children, it's going to take time, just like the olive, right? The olives, you have to crush them and cold press it, press all the oil out. And you know what? I believe we are in a season of refinement right now. We're in a season where we can't rush to find the answers to what is next. We are in a season to be like the olives that have to be crushed and pressed. So God's going to refine the purest things in our lives. Amen? So be patient, church. Take time as the children of God. It's okay. Take your time. And as God gives us these promises of the grain and new wine and olive oil, he says later in Joel that he is going to pour out his spirit on all people, or in the old translation, all flesh. That means it doesn't matter where you come from. Everyone has the same flesh, right? Inside, we're all the same. No matter what skin color you are, as Pastor Francis often say, we may be white, we may be yellow, we may be black, but if you cut us open, we bleed the same color, don't we? We're all the same flesh of God. And so God is saying he's going to pour out his spirit on all people. And I think this one we can read together in verse 28. I think it should be large enough. Let's read it together. Children, can we read it too together? 
and afterward. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's on all people. Did you know that in the ancient times, only men were chosen? It was not fair. It was an unjust society. But somehow, God in his great love, even thousands of years ago, said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on the daughters, like Zoe, like Denise. God is going to pour out his spirit on you. On the little boys, he's going to pour out his spirit. There's no differentiation of who's better. No, it's all the uh, girls and the boys. And what about age? Is it just the young people God likes? No, right? The old men will dream dreams. The young men will see visions. Hallelujah. God doesn't say, oh, you're old, you're useless. No. God will use the seniors. God will use the young ones. Chris will see visions. Right? You're going to have a vision of what God is going to do in your life. Right, Chris? To transform the community. And God says, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. You think about servants, they're usually a lower social status than the masters, right? God is saying that even those with whom the society thinks, oh, they're, they're nobody. They're just a janitor. Oh, they're just a servant. They just wash dishes. God is saying even the lady who washes dishes, the old man who's cleaning, I'm going to pour out my spirit on them. There's no differentiation of oh, who makes the six-figure salary or who makes a, a very little money. It doesn't matter to God. God is saying that my servants will receive my spirit. This is our belief as a church that on servants, on masters, it doesn't matter. God is pouring out his spirit. Hallelujah. Because when we are called the servants of God, it means he is very pleased with us. You know who was called the servant of God, this title in the Old Testament? Think about Exodus. Moses. Moses was called the servant of God friend of God. Praise God that all of us, we can become his servants and receive his spirit. And the promise is that everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. And the word in the, the Hebrew is, is more like not just saved in the sense of, oh, you pray and you go to heaven. It's like God will deliver you from your trials. God will deliver you when you don't have bread, when you don't have wine, when you don't have olive oil. God will deliver you and save you. That is what he is saying. And this is the promise of the Spirit, which in the New Testament, Peter refers back to this passage on the next slide. Because Peter, if you remember at Pentecost, when they receive the Holy Spirit and the tongues of fire come on them and they speak all the languages, then Peter quotes this exact same passage. Remember? Right? He says, all my my sons and daughters will prophesy, the young men will see visions. Peter is saying this is being fulfilled, church. This is being fulfilled. And as he says this promise, then he, yeah, you can go to the next slide. He has a call for the people. He is a call for the people. Let's read this together. I believe we can read it too. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. The call is to repent and be baptized, that when we have been walking away from the Lord, we're trying to make bread, make a living on our own, we repent by saying, I can't do it. I want to turn back to the cross, to Jesus. That is the call. To repent, to say, I need forgiveness because I'm always arguing with my spouse. I'm always arguing with my parents. I have conflicts with people. I'm selfish. I need to turn back to Jesus. And when we make that turn to say, I can't do it on my own anymore. I'm tired of striving. God says, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And you know what? This promise is for you and the next generations, right? For your children. And I love this. It says, and for all who are far off. Those who have been far away from God, that we think they're no good, 
You know, those people at school, you're like, oh, those people are no good. I don't want to hang out with them. My mom doesn't want me to hang out with them. God's Spirit can even be poured out on them. God's Spirit reaches out to those who are far off. Hallelujah. God is calling His children home. So today, church, we have a chance to respond, to repent, and then to receive the Holy Spirit. So I just want to take a moment to do a little breathing exercise with you. Something I often do is I imagine when I breathe, I want to breathe in all of God's goodness, His faithfulness. I breathe it in. And then I'm going to exhale really hard because I want to exhale all of my stress, all of the anger I feel towards somebody, all of the resentment I hold towards my parents. I'm going to breathe it all out. So let's try that, okay? Everybody, take a deep breath. Breathe in God's goodness and breathe out the anger. One more time. Let's breathe it in, God's goodness. Breathe out the stress. One last time. We breathe in God's goodness. Breathe out all the bad stuff, Jacob. We breathe it out. We breathe in and breathe out God's goodness. So I want to have a chance now for us to respond, to have a call to repentance. I want to invite you. Can we stand together? Just as a time to say this is between me and God. This is like not to show other people how good or bad I am. No, this is between me and God that I really want to come back to you. I want to give us a time to really repent to God and say, if you feel like in your life there are things you hold on to, you can't let go of, this is the time you tell God, God, I want to let go of it. I want to release it back to you. Or if you've been angry with somebody, resentment, you release it to him. All right? So we're going to try this, okay? So on the... If you, as you feel comfortable, we can either say it out loud or say it softly. But I think it's important to just speak it out, okay? Because when you speak it out, you begin to own up to the broken things in your life. You know, so if you want to say, God, I'm selfish. I need you. Or if you want to say, God, I got really angry at my brother last night. Forgive me. I, I, I really don't like this person at, at my school. Say that too, okay? We're going to begin with that. And we're going to then ask the Holy Spirit to come. But first, let's come before the Lord. So... How about for the first part, just follow me as, I, I, as we pray to the Lord. Just say, dear Jesus, dear, I come to you as a sinner. I need you. I come to repent. So now, in your own words, in your own ways, let's come before the Lord and just tell him how you are sorry or how you need him, how you're weak. So let's pray together. Forgive me that I want to do it on my own way. Forgive me, God, I don't trust you enough with my finances. Or forgive me, Lord, I've had an argument with somebody. I don't want to forgive that person. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, I'm so angry at work. I'm so angry at the people who have offended me. Forgive me, God. Help me trust you. I release it to you, Lord. Yeah, just make that your own prayer. Between you and the Lord is your prayer. We just bring it to the cross. You dump it at the cross. You breathe out the garbage. You dump it at the cross. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. So, Jesus, we thank you for hearing our confession, that you hear the confessions. You said that if we sin and we confess, you are faithful and just to forgive us. You take away all the sin in our lives. And now let's pray, church, to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. Let's pray. You can follow me as we pray this initially. Dear Holy Spirit, please fill my life. I need you. Fill me with your presence. And let's take a moment now just to receive the Holy Spirit. Just be restful. If you want to stand, you can keep standing. If you want to sit, you can sit. Be in a restful posture. We just breathe in the Holy Spirit and ask the Spirit of God what He wants to say to you or what He wants to show you. And even the children, you can ask too. You can open your hands and say, God, I want to receive your Spirit. 
And we'll just take a moment to receive what God wants to show you today. We'll just be silent for a moment. If the children are talking, it's okay. It's okay. God loves the children and the seniors. We just be restful to receive what he has for us. God may have just one word for you, that he's faithful, or he may have a picture for you, or something else. It's okay. So Lord, we ask you, thank you for giving us your spirit. We just want to respond to your goodness and turn back to you. So fill us, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take a seat. Can you... Sh share with your neighbor, those around you. Did God give you a word or a picture? What did you receive in that moment? If it's really nothing, it's okay. But maybe there's something. Just share with your neighbor briefly. Did you receive something today? Any picture or word? i just give you a moment to share with your neighbor. Sometimes it may be something super silly. <laughs> it may be a picture of a dog, and that's okay too. You never know. God can give us funny pictures and words. All right, now that you've had a moment to share, can anyone share with us what you received today? Maybe some of the children. We start first with the children. What is something you received or a picture? Tabitha? You received a picture of light. Wow, amazing. We need God's light. Okay, anything else? Oh, the, yes, Giselle? Love, Giselle said. Wonderful. We need God's love. Our children will prophesy God's words. Yeah, Zoe? Light as well. Light. Oh, life. Wow, we need life in God. This is what the Bible's saying. Our children will prophesy. I mean, what about the others? Well, you, Mark. I saw you writing something. Well done, my faithful servant, for you did not despise the small things. Wow, God is saying, I approve of you. I love you, my son. That's awesome. Anyone else share a little bit? Chris, do you have anything? Forgiveness popped up. Amen. Yeah, we speak forgiveness on one another. That's wonderful, church. This is what a, a family does, right? We receive from God together, and we encourage one another with what we had heard. And so this is the call for us today, to receive God's Spirit, to receive the gifts of God, and share it with one another. And this question is actually the one we just asked God, is what gifts does Abba Father want to give you? Because you're his beloved son, his beloved daughter. Let's just pray to close in thanksgiving, and then we will have worship. Father, we thank you that you call us a son of God. You call us a daughter of God. You love us all, young and old, those who are near and those who are far off. You are calling us back to you. So we come before you today. We need you. We are all sons and daughters of the Most High King. Thank you. You give us life. Thank you. You give us light. Thank you. You give us love. Thank you. You call us a faithful servant. We thank you, Father. You love us. And I ask your spirit be poured out on all my brothers and sisters here. Pour out your spirit that we may receive your goodness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's close with worship together. Let's come to bring our praises to God.
Amen, Jesus, you're coming, get back. So church, receive this blessing. Children of God, precious daughter of God, precious son of God, may God shine his light on you. May God bring his fruit to your barren trees. May God breathe life into your life once again. May he be your daily bread to sustain you in all your present sufferings. And may the glory of God shine upon you so you will look forward to a better future hope in his name. So bless you, church, to receive the identity as a beloved daughter, as a beloved son of God, rejoicing in his love. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Be blessed, church. This is the end of our service. Amen.
Thanks to anyway, it offers two pages. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ooh. Ooh. Have a blessed day, Prophecy, everyone. visions, and lots of things. <laughs> Bye-bye. God bless Bye -bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Blessings. Thank you, Iggy and John.